I was never much of a boy scout. Tying knots, sewing badges, all that shiitake mushroom was never for the young dog. The only part I could really get on board with was lighting up those s'mores over the campfire, although I'd rather be lighting up something else. Maybe a firework? Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you, you right there, yes. Oh well, thanks for watching and welcome to our kitchen. Today, we're doing another video in the Cookbook Corner series that I've started doing that I'm blooming well loving. The last one was the Ben and Jerry's video. <laughs> A lot of you have been in touch uh, on the contact form on my website. That's the best way to get in touch about this. Uh, I haven't replied to everyone, I'm really sorry, but I'm getting there. Uh, and sent me cookbook. So I'm gonna try a recipe from the book, do a little review of it, uh, sign it and send it back. So thank you to Tim uh, that sent me this one. This is the Snoop Dogg cookbook. Now I mentioned this uh, before, you probably don't really have that like, stereotype of me. You probably think that I like cheesy music. I do, but I also do like some Snoop Dogg songs generally. And my favorite Snoop Dogg joke? What's Snoop Dogg's favorite tool? The chisel. Sorry. So what normally happens is I'll go through the book a little bit and then we'll start the recipe. But the recipe we've picked out, in fact, Chloe has picked out and she'll try at the end, is a s'mores pie. So if you don't know what a s'mores is, it's basically a biscuit or graham cracker, a chocolate and marshmallow, a pie, so with a homemade crust, chocolate filling, and an epic marshmallow topping that we can optionally, optionally, but of course we're gonna do it, chef's blowtorch it. It should look amazing. Now, there are no photos of what this final dish is supposed to look like, but that actually makes me have like lower expectations, but from the description alone, my pie dish all. Let's get going, we're gonna start with the chocolate filling. All right, first step, get yourself a saucepan. This is some sugar, cocoa powder. and the cookbook, it's American, obviously, so it says cornstarch, so uh, for us UK folks, it is uh, corn flour is all for shizzle. Pinch of salt. And then we add in the milk, and also some heavy cream, so double cream, what we call it. And so it kind of, it's giving me like um, ganache vibes at the moment. And I think that alone, I'm not gonna taste it, is blooming cheeky. All right, we also need an egg. Add the egg and place the saucepan over a medium high heat. Some might say, drop it like it's hot. Whisk constantly, cooking it until the mixture begins to thicken and bubbles begin popping on the surface, all right? Okay, so I've now decreased the heat. Can you see how much that's thickened up? Apparently for about a minute solid of vigorous whisking. I probably need both hands for this, but as you can see, that difference is insane already. Oh my gosh. It's suddenly looking more like a pie filling than a milkshake. Look at that thickness, that is crazy. Taking that off the heat and now, when you do the missing the sign. That's one of my favorite songs actually, Signs. A bit more poppy, but I quite like Justin Timberlake songs as well. So we now strain that filling through a sieve into a bowl just to probably get out any uh, nasty lumps or something. So I'm getting a spatula and just passing it back and forth, kind of scraping it against the sieve itself to push it through. You can see the heat coming off of that. I think though, as it cools, even like that moment where I uh, moved the camera just here to this next step, it formed a little skin on top. So with this still being so hot, it should firm up quite nicely. You can see there are like, I don't know, is that like sort of chunks of little bits of cocoa powder steel or some skin or something? Uh, not, not human skin. Uh, but no, that's actually, you can see the benefit of doing that. We should be left with a nice smooth topping. Add vanilla extract, whisk until incorporated in. Ooh, yeah, that's good, that's quite intense. Place a piece of plastic wrap directly onto the pudding surface. I wonder if that's to stop the skin forming. I don't think it will, but it doesn't say to do this, but I'm gonna let it stand to room temperature first because that is still really, really hot. I don't wanna put that in my fridge or freezer. That'll get angry. So let's uh, wrap it. All right, we just bagged it up. Um, yes, that is still quite warm indeed. I'm gonna put it in a cool place in the house and then we'll bung it in a freezer. Folks, let's just get the ingredients ready for the crust. True story, I'm literally just wiping down my cupboards because uh, there was a suspicious looking white powder that went all over my kitchen cabinets. The baking powder tub at the top decided to just fall out and I caught it and it just went poof. Uh, didn't catch it on camera, sadly, but I did succeed in getting the light brown sugar out. So we go straight to the crust. I was never much of a boy scout. Tying knots, sewing badges, all that shiitake mushroom was never for the young dog. The only part I could really get on board with was lighting up those s'mores over the campfire, although I'd rather be lighting up something else. Right, maybe a firework? Whether you're a weenie boy scout or a bad boy like Big Snoop, everyone will agree this pie is fire. There we are. 
So yeah, a typical small toasted marshmallow wedged between uh, graham crackers, uh, which I used to call Graham's when I first turned up to America on summer cram. Oh, Graham crackers. I'm like, you're so funny, man. Say it again, Graham. They're Graham. You can get them in some supermarkets in the UK. They do like s'mores kits now, but they're blooming expensive. You can order them online. But digestive biscuits, which I got for my 40th birthday, I'll come on to that in a sec, uh, can be an easy substitute because we just need the crumbs. But we also need some butter, sugar, and salt. But we're gonna melt this right now. Like 20 second blasts. Just melt it, you don't want it spitting. Yeah, nice and ah, melted. Wow, um, go shorty, it's your birthday. This is something I got for my birthday. Yeah, my in-laws got me a s'mores uh, homemade kit thing. They also got me a hammock, but they put marshmallows in it. There was chocolate in it, but my kids have eaten that. And they got me the digestive. So this is what we'll use as an alternative for our crumbs. This is another thing they got me as well that I haven't really looked at yet. I think you like that thing in the middle, but it burns a beautiful flame for two hours. It's like a log that's carved with something in the middle, like a wick, like a candle wick or something. Quite nice, isn't it? It should work out all right though, we need 180 grams of crumbs. It's a bit like that thing, what weighs more, a ton of feathers or a ton of stone or whatever that thing is. And I was, oh yeah, a ton of stone weighs more. That got me once, that was an expensive pillowcase. Anyhow, let's whiz these up. Can you see it? Oh, that's quite a big pie dish, I really hope I've got enough. Um, the good news is, if I don't, I've got enough ingredients left to make more. Um, we'll just see what happens, right? So we've got all those crumbs there, some light brown sugar, and the melted butter. Oh my goodness. So we need to work quite quickly here and stir that all around to try and coat all of the crumbs fairly evenly. Try and get them all kind of like wet with the butter. That is what's gonna help hold this crust together. What I think I'll do, I'm gonna take spoonfuls and just scatter it around the plate first of all to try and give me enough coverage for the base. Just press it down. Oh wow, yeah, that's pretty good. The most important part is to keep it nice and compacted because once it chills, it's that butter that's gonna fuse it all together. But it is actually gonna be quite a thin crust. But then what I'll do is take a spoon, lift that sort of portion size on, and then just press it against the edge of the dish like that. Sort of join the two worlds together. It feels really weak at the moment. I'm really scared about this, but um, hopefully the fridge will be our best friend. Speaking of which, before I finish this off, let's get uh, the chocolate pudding in the freezer. Remember, you're supposed to put it in the fridge, but I'm just doing this to speed it up. I love how it's randomly next to the tub of homemade Ken and Jenny's that we made. We're still getting our way through that. So now that's in there, I'm gonna go back to that crust and I'll see you in a minute. I have to be honest, folks. I should have uh, not doubted this and just crusted uh, the process. I'm using a spoon now because where the sides meet the base, you can kind of get this nice sort of curvature and press it all around and smooth it out. It is still quite delicate, but the chill should really help it. And that is where it's going, in the fridge. This is going in the fridge uh, for a good hour. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Of course, you could just buy a store-bought one. I believe in America, they do actually do store-bought graham cracker crust as well, which is insane. Yeah, it does sound brilliant, doesn't it? But that was how easy it was to make it ourselves anyway. So not that much effort, bung it in the fridge. I'll have a clean down and then we'll have a quick look through this book. All right, so this book, I bloomin' love it. Now Snoop Dogg has done some shows with Martha Stewart, who randomly follows me on Twitter by the way, which is pretty cool. Um, Snoop Dogg doesn't yet, but I'm sure he will after this video. <laughs> there is actually a foreword by uh, Martha herself. I didn't actually see that before, um, but there's a little bit there about what you put in your store cupboards, honey, hot sauce. And I quite like it because through the book says he's like interludes, like this is a section on like his favourite places to eat. There's a section on his favourite like crisps or chips, whatever you want to call them. There's a breakfast cereal one as well. I just found that quite nice, it kind of broke the book up. The photography's really good as well and I'll sport for choice. There's like loads of recipes uh, to have done like breakfast, lunch, dinner. I very nearly did this billionaire's bacon recipe, it looks awesome. Then there was this huge picture of a fried bologna sandwich that just stood out. I was like, I don't know what that is, but I really will probably make that one day. I mean, I'm definitely gonna do it to be honest. It looks, I mean, that photo is awesome. Look at that. But well, there was some really cool uh, sandwiches as well. There's like a catfish sandwich. There was a Cubano sandwich. There was a po' boy, shrimp Alfredo, spaghetti, uh, mac and cheese, but it's like quite uh, intense mac and cheese. Loads of flavor going on, love it. Chicken and waffles, look at that. Oh my gosh. And the desserts, so they've got like these Rolls Royce cookies, which sounded amazing. I just didn't want to do cookies. I thought, you know, I've done cookies a fair bit. Brownies, but Mrs. B's brownies are still just the best for me. 
rags to riches apple pie. And the one I very, very nearly did was this go shorty, it's your birthday cake. I thought that was hilarious, but I mean, it's, it sounds amazing, but it, for me, it was just a chocolate cake. So that's why I wanted to do the s'mores pie, just something a bit different. And there's also some drinks at the end, including, of course, uh, gin and juice. Now, the only thing I'm gonna say about this book, and it's not a bad thing at all, it just shows how busy Snoop Dogg probably was. Every single photo, like that one, that one, that one, and that one, he's all wearing the same clothes. Now, that makes no difference whatsoever, but for me, that kind of gives me the thing that he was like, Snoop, you've got to turn up here for one hour, hold some food, and then you've just done a cookbook. Um, and that might be the case, but fair play to him, because honestly, the recipes in there sound amazing, and I really think, well, we don't know what this is gonna taste like yet, but it's a really cool book. I didn't even see those either. Look at those ribs, oh. Boston is snoring. I don't know if I try and walk over to him, I might wake him up. He can't hear it, but we are literally at the stage right now in the recipe where we are chilling. Sup. Because the last thing to do is make the marshmallow topping, but we need that to go on the pie to shape it once it's warm because it cools down quickly. And if it does that, it, it kind of holds its shape. Apparently, I've never made it like this before, so it's quite cool. Uh, so I'll probably give myself about sort of 40 minutes and then we'll start doing it. Let's just tiptoe over to a snoring pug. And remember, if you've not subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. Do regular videos each week. And if you are, make sure your notifications are turned on and consider following me on social media for loads of behind the scenes bits. And if you've got any cool cookbooks for future cookbook corner videos, let me know. <coughs> not quite Snoop Dogg, more Sleep Dogg. Uh, right. Marshmallow topping. We've got some egg whites, that's free egg whites, uh, a bit of salt, vanilla. Uh, this is the cream of tartar, which is actually like a raising agent, and some sugar. That is it, but it goes into a bowl, which is sat above water, which we need to simmer. Make sure the water doesn't touch the bottom of the bowl. Kind of like Bam Marie style when you're melting chocolate. So we're bringing it up to a simmer. But meanwhile, the chocolate's going in the crust. It's very hard to show you, and there's probably a few loose crumbs here, but other than that, that is really quite firm now that's very surprising i love it oh oh my gosh that is like proper chocolate pudding there look at that we'll push this in i just flick <laughs> sorry tim if i send this back to you you're gonna have a bit of a smear on there sorry mate all right so that's nice and level back in the fridgezel oh that looks so good Right, let's get cracking on that topping. So into that simmering water, everything apart from the vanilla extract is going in there. So we have actually got some water, so we'll get that in first of all. Then some salt, the cream of tartar, three egg whites, and the sugar. So we keep whisking until it's warm to the touch, which should be about three to four minutes. So it's a little bit of guesswork actually, but I can see the egg whites are starting to foam a little bit. This is good. Oh yeah, that is warm. Huh, woo! Let's hope as we put it down, as it cools on this uh, little tea towel here with the electric whisk for seven minutes apparently, we get some pretty good marshmallow topping. Vanilla extract goes in. Thick, glossy, oh my gosh. I've just got to work out how we want to present this now because you can smooth it with little dimples or you can go crazy with massive tin peaks. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it and that bridge is right now. So we bring in the pie, and I am just gonna, oh, oh my gosh, it's still quite thin, why is that? But you can still spike it. That's crazy, I was not expecting that texture. It does warn that you make a lot, but I'm not disappointed by that. I wanna really go for this. Got a little bit left there, but I feel like that is enough. I mean, we can go really crazy on these peaks if we want. If we just fluff it up like that. I am absolutely over the moon with that. I am gonna put it in the fridge for about half an hour before taking a slice for myself, and then we'll get Chloe to taste it. So, see you in half an hour. <laughs> Why can I smell burning? No, I think he's looking on in approval, there we go. Check that out, folks. Oh my gosh. Loving those curves. Let's mange. I don't really want to send this back to Tim, but uh, thank you so much, mate. I've just left you a personal message on there and signed it. Not quite Snoop Dogg's signature, I know, but um, I will be sending that back. Although I'm very tempted to next week maybe feel one other cheeky recipe out of this. I like the idea of the billionaire's bacon. Right, I'm not expecting this to look that pretty. Let's see if we can get this 
in one lump. <sighs> oh my gosh, there's so much meringue on it. It's covering the chocolate base. There is crust under there as well, okay. But look at that, a big old wedge out of it, right down there. Got most of the base out. But that's the only thing, perhaps if I had one of those like loose bottom pie dishes where I can pop it out and you've got the whole shape there as well. But I really don't think it matters about that. So if I try and get a bit of everything. <sighs> mm -hmm. Oh wow. The biscuit base is just a biscuit base, a buttery biscuit base. If you know, you know. Mm. That marshmallow topping is absolutely bonkers. I love that. But the actual nicest thing out of all of it, not that it's not nice at all, but the thing that really, as I go for one more combo, mm, the chocolate filling, and there's only cocoa powder in there. It's like a ganache vibe with the cream and the milk going on, but that is absolutely outstanding. It tastes similar to chocolate pudding that you can buy, but like fresher and richer and more intense. That is, Phenomenal. I, I've got a feeling Chloe's gonna love it. I wasn't expecting this to be bad in any way, but it's just really massively surprised me. Perhaps some of Martha Stewart's team helped with the recipe development, but honestly, it's really, really good. So don't forget, recently we've done the Coca-Cola cookbook, we've done the Ben and Jerry's cookbook, and now the Snoop Dogg book, so I will get that sent back. If you do wanna send one, I'm getting a lot of messages in my inbox uh, on my website contact form is the best way to contact me. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much, uh, Barry out. The shizzle. Are you hungry? First shizzle, my nizzle. Pie 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 pie. Looks good, doesn't it? I like how you like flavour. Yeah. Let me eat it now. Chop chop. Oh, that was a big mouthful. I have to say, it might be a bit of a disappointment to you. What? Really? But out of ten, yeah, I give it a million. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, it no. might be a bit of a. It's amazing. You do like it. What's your favourite bit? The all of it. Last thing to say, if you've got any of that marshmallow topping left over, it's really tasty. Don't get too excited with it. All right. Cheers for watching.